Romans chapter 1 goes into a lot of detail, talks about how it's an unnatural lust, an unnatural desire. I take that to mean that it's demonic. It's demonically inspired. It's not a normal kind of sin that the average person struggles with. So why does it come upon certain people and not others? I don't know. Perhaps the Lord wants to use a certain person, so the enemy comes in, maybe starting in the playground, starting young, to destroy that before it can get started, before it can, that person can represent a threat to his kingdom. For other people, maybe it's a different reason. Um, what about uh, nature versus nurture and all of the, the, all of the psychology behind this and all of the research? What we do know from Scripture our source of truth that we should be referencing above and beyond any kind of Christian psychology research books. We should be referencing the Word of God and that tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's a spiritual war that we're in here on earth. It's not a God wants everybody to be happy and have a perfect life. It's not, that's not the reality. What God doesn't promise a perfect life that we have to fight to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent, deny ourselves, and follow Him. He who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. For every Christian, the call is the same, to deny ourselves and to follow Christ, to repent from following our deceitful hearts, from following the world, from following what we want, what our flesh desires, to follow Christ instead. So it's the same for everybody. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all in the same boat, and we're all called to repentance and new life in Christ. Just like in the Garden of Eden when Satan through the snake tempted Eve and she bit of the apple, right? We're accountable, the Bible says, for every idle word. So we're accountable when we follow that temptation, that is sin, and we're accountable for that sin on the Day of Judgment. Although the temptation is not sin, when I go and take action to follow that temptation, it's sin. The Lord's leading to go and share in churches and to be a resource to churches. We've been so encouraged here in the U.S. that many churches have had us here in Pennsylvania, specifically that many churches have had us in and taken bold stands with us that many people these days are not willing to do because we're afraid to offend people. We want to call folks back to the truth of the Bible, to not just, uh, not just be sharing the love of God without the judgment of God. The Lord does everything in love. But he's also a just God and he has to punish sin. And there's no such thing as a gay Christian. That's not biblical. The Lord calls us to turn away from following our deceitful hearts to follow him. It's a new life. It's a life revolution. It's not continuing in the old life. It's about exchanging old life and who we thought we were in the world for peace and eternal life, everlasting life in heaven. Those of us who struggle with homosexuality and gender identity are not to follow our temptations, not to allow our temptations to define us. We're defined by who the Lord says we are. We're created in the image of God. We're to, to use our lives to glorify the Lord. That's why we're here. Don't give up. Stay in the fight, brother. Keep fighting forward. Don't trust your feelings. Trust the Lord and His Word that never changes. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God to families who have folks who struggle. Stand on the Word of God, balance grace with truth, build relationships and get close to folks sharing the love of Christ, but don't let it end there. Share the truth of what the Bible says that homosexuality is sin, along with many, many, many other sins. Homosexuality is sin and it's forgivable, praise God.